Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here at First Baptist Church for this uh, weekly worship service on the Lord's Day. You are in for a special treat because uh, recently Michael Pig, uh, who leads evangelism, the evangelism strategy and evangelism work for our Baptist churches in South Carolina, uh, preached in our morning service at First Baptist, and you're going to get to see the message, hear the message he preached that Sunday today, and uh, I know you're going to be blessed. So thank you for joining us, and I'm going to pray, and then the next voice you hear will be that of Michael Pig. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have today to worship King Jesus. And we thank you that uh, you love everybody all over this world, and sent Jesus to die on the cross so that every man, woman, boy, and girl could be saved and, and be in a relationship with you. And we pray today that you speak to hearts, those who are far from you, those who once knew you but have drifted away, those who are struggling, those who are afraid, those who have questions. Father, right now, speak to their heart. And I pray you use this message by my brother, Michael Pig, to speak to every heart. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> God bless you. You're just so kind, so kind. I tell you now, I, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I worship the Lord. I do. Uh, and, um, I'm so, yeah, I started to do the beginning worship in the back so I can go ahead and be who I am, because up here, you know, I, I might have been a distraction, but especially when they started talking about, you know, love has a name, hope has a name, oh my Lord, come on somebody, and then they said his name is Jesus, and I was looking at that, I said, okay, we need to wake up the house, what's his name? All right, I just want to make sure you knew what the name was. I come to you today in the name of the Lord, and his name is Jesus. I love him. He uh, entered my heart, my soul, uh, when I was 10 years old, and uh, ever since that day, I would like to say I have been serving the Lord. <sighs> I would like to say that. That's, that's if, you know, if, you know, if I was writing a book, I would probably say that because, you know, nobody would know the truth. But, but in reality, uh, I attempted to serve the Lord all the days of my life. And there were days that I didn't quite accomplish it. And then there were some days that I did better than the day before. And the difference in all of that is I discovered in every turn of life, Jesus still loved me. Amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and so grateful to God for your pastor who is a great man of God, an awesome preacher, uh, a guy who opened up uh, the pulpit that the Lord has put him in uh, to allow me to come and share. And I've already been asked the question, you know, are you related? <laughs> And I said, yeah, he's my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, so so we, 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 he and I just, uh, we hit it off just immediately. And I, I just thank God for that. Um, I want to share with us this morning, it's right there on the screen already, talking about uh, what each and every one of us ought to do together occasionally is say to the Lord, Lord, make me over. Now, I'm one of those Baptist preachers after the old fashioned, even though I learned all these new techniques of communicating and, and you know, how to expositorily expose the word of God. But I discovered there's some, there's some cultural things in me that I couldn't get rid of. Somebody go ahead and say amen. I like people who talk to me. Amen. Now, I got some brothers back there. Uh, you know, wait, wait, wave your hand, brothers. Yeah, they're going to help me out. Amen. So if you are silent the whole day, they got my back. Amen. You know, I'm not going to tell you I have to pay them $20 a piece to do that. But, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, I, I just thank God that, that there ought to be some witnesses in Lord's house. Amen. Isn't that right? You know, it, it shouldn't be one person. And I, said, you know, and I know somebody is saying right now, but we're listening. Yeah. 
And when you're at home, you're listening too, but I guarantee that you cut the person off before they finish the sentence. Wives, don't you? <laughs> Husbands, but when you're trying to raise those kids and, and uh, they're saying something to you, you already know better and you just head them off at the curve and say, uh-uh, don't want to hear it. Yeah. Well, that's talking back to somebody. Now, that's, of course, I use two extreme measures, but, but in the house of the Lord, it's all right. Because all you're saying, keep on saying it, brother. And if you, and if you do that, I will have you out of here real quick. Ephesians chapter 5. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. You're, you're the last service, see? I don't have to hurry for the next service. So, you, yeah. <laughs> see, I'm trying to give awful, uh, ample warnings, right? Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 15, going through verse 20. It says this, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is the debauchery. Sorry for spoiling the teenager who says, I just can't wait to get that drink. I'm sorry, I messed it up, didn't I? Uh, but be filled with the Spirit addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name, remember they sung about that name, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. God's holy word for God's people. You know, the, we spend a lot of time uh, trying to make sure we look good, don't we? You know, there, there, are, there are young people uh, who, who starve themselves to make sure that there's no flab. Uh, we have, have other people who uh, hit the weight room on a regular basis to make sure the muscles are toned. And, and we have some people who already is broke before the week gets started, making sure they get the right cosmetics. And don't, don't even think about the, the people, and I, I know what group I'm preaching to right now, but there, there are some people who spend an awful lot of things making sure that they go to the right hairstylist. You know, they got to go to the who's who to make sure the right cut and the right texture and the right form. And, you know, and, and if you're a little short on money, you go to the money broker in the house and say, give me some. Just to make sure that you're looking good. Uh, uh, you know, parents, you know, go over the tip because they say things like prom and they say things like the college banquet. They say things like weddings, you know. I mean, I don't know why we go broke over all those special days just to make a person look good. Anybody in here look good? I said talk to me. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to claim it now? Okay, I see some good-looking people in here, and I see some people who spend an hour in front of the mirror to do it. I'm, I'm looking at them. Don't make me call your name out now. The Lord already revealed it to me. There's some guys in here who all of a sudden started plucking some things out. You know, they saw a little gray hair there, you know, say, mm, get rid of it. Why? Just to look good. Amen. And then th don't f forget the threat. Husbands, when you start putting on just a little bit of weight, I'm, I'm just talking about a pound and a half. I ain't talking 20 pounds. Just a pound and a half, and all of a sudden she said, boy, getting a little pudgy there, aren't you? What is she saying on the, on the, on the sly part? Dude, check yourself. Well, we spend all of this time trying to look good and present ourselves to the public arena that here I am. You know, I, I, uh, uh, I watch a lot of reruns because reruns is the best thing because that's the safest material you can watch on television. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm watching Happy Days, and, you know, I love the intro. You know, Arthur Fonzarelli, you know, getting ready for his day in the morning. He gets to the mirror, and he starts to, about to comb his hair, and he stops, and he says, Hey. <laughs> I was like, I slept all night last night, and nothing's out of place. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know. And so, so here we spend time trying to look good. There's a show that was created called Extreme Makeover. And in Extreme Makeover, here it is. They set up a show to take average people and make them look good, make them look beautiful, outstanding, and gorgeous. And they they were calling plastic surgeons and the best hairstylists and and the best in makeup artistry just to make the person now that they've created be a person that was different from what they started with. Did y'all hear what I just said? The person they started with is not the same person they end with. And you start singing one of them old songs, guys like, who's that lady? Who's that lady? Sexy lady. Oh, I did say the word sexy. Sorry. (laughs) Take it back. But, it, but it's all in, in the graphs to get to a spot, to get to an activity where we look differently, where we become appealing to the people around us. And when we do that, we, are we really, are we really, are we really making ourselves more beautiful? Are we? No, we're not. Because true beauty, you know, the, the poet says, in the hands of the beholder. But even more so than that, because that, that guy might not have known who was really holding them. But beauty actually starts on the inside. Yeah, because the disposition that, that you present of yourself is really what ends up being seen. I love cartoons. Who doesn't love cartoons? But there's an old guy, a Frenchman that I like so much. I mean, he's a great guy. You know, his name is Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> and, and one day there's an episode where this cat strayed from home. And, and this cat, you know, you know, walking through the field, went under a fence that was just freshly painted. And the cat crawled under the fence. And some of the white paint rubbed off on the black cat's back. And then all of a sudden, from across the field, Pepe sees that feline. And, you know, I don't know where he got the speed, but the cartoon shows that all of a sudden, twinkle, faster than a twinkle in our eye, he's from that spot all the way over. He's got, he says, oh, my sweet, how beautiful you are. Come with me to the Casbah, and we shall make beautiful music together, no? And while he's there rapping big time, you know, all of a sudden this sit sinks over and it gets to the nose of the feline. And no matter how beautiful his words was and no matter how charming he was trying to make her feel, that scent got to her nostrils. And guess what she did? She got out of Dodge quick. (laughs) She was on the run because the smell preceded the outside texture of Pepe Le Pew. And, you know, he was a rapper from way back. Y'all didn't know, uh, you know, Pepe Le Pew started rap. You know, he he did. He, uh, he, he, He could do it. And so, and so here it is that, that no matter who you make yourself up to be on the outside, the ingredients on the inside is going to get out. And it's going to communicate something probably that you did not intend to unless you're taking care of what's on the inside. So God is warning us, he's compelling us, he's making us look at this text to say, I want to work on you on the real side. I want to make sure that when you're being made over that you're not just looking at the structure, but you're looking at the ingredients. And so he wants to make you over. So let's look at that text, the first two verses there. And I ask you a question, what has to change? He says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. What has to change? Everything. Paul says we have to change from the inside out. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we think, even the way we drink. 
No more sliding through life. We've got to check our every step. No more wasting time. We've got to watch and pray. No more getting by. We've got to study to know God's will. No more loose living. We've got to set a good example for everyone who looks at us. No more running on our own steam. We've got to let God take control each and every day. That's why Jesus said, uh, every day, take up your cross and follow me. God wants us to pay attention to how we relate to each other. Think about that. Sometimes we treat family the worst. He wants us to pay attention to how we treat one another. You know why? Somebody say why. why? Okay, thank you. I'm glad you asked. He wants the people who are close to us to be our practice field. You know, you, you don't perfect, you know, a performance or a game by just jumping into it and going from cold turkey. No, you need to practice it. And the best place to practice it, practice it is with somebody who's going to forgive you. <laughs> somebody who, who's going to be more like God and look beyond all of your shortcomings. Husband, any husbands in here? Are you scared to confess that? <laughs> it's like, I saw guys doing this. <laughs> and, so, and so it's like, now, guys, I don't know what it is, but you know how we used to say an elephant never forgets? Scratch that out. That's not true. A wife never forgets. That's another one you can put in a book. A wife never forgets. How do we know that? Because I did something 12 years ago, and all of a sudden I was just talking the other day, da, 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 and my wife brought it up, and I, I didn't even remember it. And I said, oh, Lord, okay. So I'm still paying for that one, huh? <laughs> and so, so with your family and your relationships, those things that you're, people are, you're already connected with, that's our practice field. That's, that's how, we, how we get ready to perform out in public with somebody who's going to forgive you, somebody who's going to love you, somebody who knows you so well they was ready for you to make that mistake. I knew you was going to do that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it happens over and over and over. But, that, but it's done in a loving way, isn't it? Because you, you're, you're still going to hug each other. You're still going to talk to each other. The relationship is going to grow and deepen just simply because you're allowed to grow together. So that's what, what God is doing. That's what he placed us in proximity. That's why I bet text is there. He's wanting us to look carefully then how you act. Look carefully how you walk. Look carefully because the day is evil upon us. And the world is not going to let you rehearse in front of them. They want to see the real thing. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I know it's, it sounds like a pressure point moment, but you can camouflage it on the outside all you want. The world is going to see the real you. One of the things that's crazy is, is a spelling bee. You know, in a spelling bee, you spend all this time uh, learning to spell it and was and spot and all this. And then in the spelling bee, they go out and get some hard words all of a sudden. That, that is just totally unfair. And then they put you up on the stage for half the school to turn out to see. And so, okay, you're going to invite the school to just to find out what I already knew that I can't spell. <laughs> but you go ahead and take the word and you receive the word and you do the best that you can. And so you did not spell the right word, but guess what? There's a whole lot of other people that miss their word too. All of a sudden you're still in the family because even though I gave it my best shot, I noticed that I'm not the only guy who did not get it right. You know what that's saying? That's, that's just like why we rehearse so that we can eventually get it right. How do, how do you learn to love your enemies? Well, first learning to love your family. How do you learn to get along with people with a different point of view? Well, start in your family. <laughs> All families have different points of view. <laughs> And then when you accomplish that, you will start living out, making the best use of the time. 
to not waste it, to not squander it, to, to not just let it fall to the wayside because God is interested directly in the way we walk and the way we talk and the way we relate, the way we love, the way we like, the way we trust, the way we support, the way we help, the way, the way we extol our kindness. He is interested in all of that. So there's no more sliding through life. We've got to check on every step. There's no more wasting time. We've got to watch and to pray. No more just getting by. Let's get it right. What is the awesomeness of Ephesians? Ephesians starts talking about it's God who has created us and have chosen us and have saved us. So he puts the first heavy presupposition on God and so he has the right to talk to us now like this because he's already done the hard work I've already shown you how possible it is to live I've already shown you how you can endure affliction I've already shown you how hardships will come but be of good cheer I've already overcome the world he has set the pace so what am I trying to say with Can you imagine when he talks about time that God is trying to shake up your day? (laughs) That's a crazy thing. I I thought about that just from my own experiences. Like, uh, for instance, one time I was preaching a sermon or going to preach a sermon. um, And it was while I was on a mission trip. This was my, literally my first mission trip as a freshman in college. And, and they're sending me to be the guy to do, you know, uh, devotional messages for the outdoor activity. I was up in the New Jersey area, and the area that they were sending me to my first week there was Whitesville. Thank you for being honest. I know if more chuckles than that need to be in here. <laughs> now, can you imagine what I felt? <laughs> I said, surely they're sending the wrong missionary to Whitesville. And so, how does this guy prepare a message for Whitesville? Yeah. You know, <laughs> hadn't had the experience of how to be white, for one thing. So, what I discovered after much prayer and even calling the pastor and saying, man, what am I going to do? He said, guess what? They're not asking you to come and and, uh, teach a white message. They're asking you to teach the Word of God. And I said, duh, okay. (laughs) So, so therefore, I did not need the experience of being white. But what experience did I need? The experience of expounding and teaching and sharing the Word of God. Wow, did that help me a lot. But guess what? I got to tell you the end of the story. When I arrive in Whitesville, and all of a sudden we set up and the time for it to start, all these black kids came out of white buildings. Boy, did that just mess me up. (laughs) Here it was, I was ready to suffer for Jesus. And all of a sudden, I said, okay, they did know what they were doing. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's the way the Lord works. He gives you all the training and the preparation. And all he's wanting you to do is to be who you are, who he has created you to be. Can you imagine all of the stress that we go through sometimes? It's because we do not place our total trust in Jesus Christ. A person can go through the day and be unthinking and thoughtless and careless and uncaring. The worldly mind and the Bible calls that person a fool. It seems so easy for a person to give little thought about where they should be and what they should be about. If you make a mistake here and there, it doesn't matter that that much to you because most of the time, isn't it true? Our response is, whatever. (laughs) If I get that whatever sometimes, I just say, I want to knock you out. (laughs) But can you imagine all of a sudden, you know, we're reporting to God, you know, at the gates and and, and all of a sudden there are mistakes that have been made, but, but God is not going to assess our lives by saying, whatever. 
He's going to assess it with reality of truth and experiences that you were personally involved with. Spiritual extreme makeovers happen when we pay attention to the little details. When you and I start looking at the little details, did I start my day with prayer? Did I curb my tongue when I wanted to say something else? Did I display a contrite or a forgiving heart? Did I walk in the presence of God and let my internal light shine so brightly that the world knew that I belonged to somebody special? Or was I careless in my daily routine? Was I careless with my speech? Was I undisciplined and uncontrolled? Was I lazy with my witness? Those are real questions that you and I are called into accountability to address and answer each and every moment of the day. It's not rocket science. It's just God's simplicity. Do you know God is just ready and willing and waiting to just bless you in your walk for him every day? He wants to love on you each and every step. He wants to get excited with what you're about to do because he already knows what you're about to do. He wants to celebrate with you your achievements. The best cheerleader and the best supporter you have is the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Can you imagine a time of how you're going to get through without his tender love and care? So what is the, the, the thing that God is actually doing? Well, first of all, let me share this with you. God wants me and you to be intentional with every step we take. Wow. To make sure that we're not walking through life with sight, but we're walking through life with faith. I'm not saying close your eyes. Notice what's going on. But faith is going to allow you to see divine possibilities all around you. Wow. Wow. Faith is going to allow you to see that, yes, you need to be long-suffering with this person because they've gone through some things that are just out of this world. Divine possibilities of God using you and me in very, very real sense. What else does God want? God wants me to become a daily mirror of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Uh, that's a biggie. I, I have to admit, that's a biggie. That for, you know, for me, after all the seminary degrees and training that I have, that God wants me to reflect the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I mean, this guy got it right. He, he died just to remain righteous. And he wants me to reflect that. Well, the thing that saves me here is that I'm to reflect it and not really be it. Because there's nothing righteous about me at all. I'm like filthy rags, how Paul (laughs) describes it in Romans. And what that means in today's English, I'm just a pitiful mess. And without the righteousness of God, who has forgiven me of my sins, have come and set up residence in my soul, in my spirit, in my life, without that... I will literally be a mess. And the reflection of his righteousness is a reflection. He's there. He's come to set up in me. And the things that I do, the things that I live out now is because of what I'm learning from him. And he's going to carry the weight for me. I love that because it's not by my might, but it's by his spirit. We live our lives as though tomorrow we're guaranteed. Many of us do. You know, if, if, if I'm 15, I already think I'm going to get to 16. If I'm 20, I already think I'm going to get to 24. If I'm 30, sure enough, I got to get to middle age. So I just discover what being middle aged really feels like. Yeah, you know what they say, I'm going to go backwards to sow my wild oaks. And so if you get to middle age and don't have that desire, that means God really has done a great work in you. Somebody say amen. <laughs> just, just, yes, I, I believe in telling the truth, all right? So it, anyway, in, in the midst of this thing about how God is reflecting his righteousness, there's one more point that I want to share with all of us. God gives us unlimited number of days to accomplish things of value. No, tomorrow is not promised to us. It really isn't. But he does give us days 
to accomplish things of value to the kingdom of God. Time is God's, and time may go on forever, but our time will soon be up. We can sit and twiddle away the hours engaged in meaningless and even evil activity. We can waste the valuable time God has given us, or we can live a spiritually disciplined life, serving Christ and ministering to those who have not yet found him. Our prayer ought to be, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom as the psalmist teach us in 90. But that choice, my brothers and sisters, is yours each and every day that God gives you. We cannot accomplish this makeover on our own. God knows that without him, we can do absolutely nothing. But with him, all things are possible. I know it can get tough sometimes, but we have help. We have the aid of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. We struggle with God's makeover plan for our lives when we resist the Holy Spirit doing his job in us. We wouldn't think of going to the owner of a famous salon for a new hairdo or a new manicure or a new makeup and tell that person that his stylist can't touch your hair. We won't do that. That doesn't make sense. How are you going to get it done if he can't touch your hair? If you want a new look, you've got to let the experts work on you. Somebody say amen. I need this side over here to say amen. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering, was this side, you know, sleeping actually, you know, so think. And, and so, and so you, you, you've, you've got to expose yourself. And the Holy Spirit is God's extreme makeover expert. Why not let the best in the land do the work on you? He focuses on transforming us from sinners into saints. He works all three shifts of the day. In fact, he's a 24-hour work artist. He specializes in full-service detailing. The Bible said in Psalm, he neither slumbers nor sleep. Many fail to change because they're trying to do it all on their own. You can't do it. It takes supernatural power to overcome this world because the scriptures said the days are evil. That's why God sent the Holy Spirit to be our consciousness of his presence every moment of the day because sometimes God is going to do something with and through you. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to embrace the text to say, watch how you walk and watch how you talk to become better instruments of the Holy Spirit as he uses you. You know, it's a privilege of every believer to say, Lord, here I am. Use me in your service. It's the privilege of every believer to say, Lord, I can't do anything without you, but with you, all things are possible. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Can you imagine starting your day just like that? That you realize the awesomeness that you're about to accomplish is because of the power of God working in you? Oh, my brothers and sisters, that's better than Superman. You know, you don't need to find a telephone booth. They don't exist anymore. Oh, you have to say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Speak through me, Lord. Make me your hands so I can serve. Make me your feet so I can be your missionary. Lord, I'm right here. I'm available to you. And so, so here I, I, I see God doing a fascinating thing with all of us. Because here it is. He, he closes this text out in a different kind of way. Yeah, you know, I understand the top part, but when he brings verses 19 and 20 to us, it throws a twist in my spirit that I had to take a little time to grip with. But now I get it. Look at the words. It says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Addressing one another in song. It says when we talk to each other, something ought to be going on. 
The best example I, I know about that is because you know, if the Spirit of God lives and dwells in us, you know, dwelling means tabernacle, he's pitched a tent, he's set up residence in us. The best thing I can think about, do you remember when, well, before uh, John the Baptist and Jesus were born, when their mothers got together? And then all of a sudden, all the, Jesus and, and John start leaping in their mother's womb. And then say, we're, we're so calm and, and Americanized, we don't really get the picture, do we? We know. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't the normal movement that, uh, that our mothers feel as, as infants are growing inside their wombs. This is the Holy Spirit thing. I believe John and Jesus started doing the holy dance in the belly. Hey, man, I can imagine Elizabeth and Mary saying, oh, oh, what you doing? Come on out. Let's go. I mean, they were getting with it. I mean, that, that was connection right there, the spirit greeting the other spirit, and they are getting excited just over the connection. And joy reached out to joy. Love reached out to love. And they shook and hugged and said, oh, what a glorious day in the Lord. Do you know why we can sing when we greet each other, when we come around each other? Because there ought to be some love and some joy and some kindness reaching up and matching up with each other to the point that excitement starts filling the room, that all of a sudden those things that, that, that was in the past is in the past because I have the present now. I can forgive you and I can forget about the offense because you are my brother and you are my sister and we should be singing the glory of God together. We should ch change the world together. And so here it is. When I think about this dynamic passage, uh, I remember going to college, and, uh, and I would see the fraternities. You see the colors and the unity, and it's just so inspirational that, you know, it just makes you want to do it. And so I did pledge a fraternity, and ours was very unique. There was no other fraternity like ours, you know, because one reason, we had talent, you know. Professional music fraternity. That means you got to be able to do something before you even want to join. Somebody say amen. That's sort of like being a Christian. You can't have the church in you until you said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. You know, that's a special ingredient. And so when, when, when I joined the fraternity, they showed me the handshake. Uh, we, we knew the ceremony. We, we knew the traditions and everything that made us who we are was who we are. That's what he's saying in this text. The things that make you who you are are those things from above and not from beneath. The things that make you who you are is because the transformational power that has come into your spirit and has now tossed out those things that don't belong and is now replacing it with something of value because God has saved your life, that God is now ready to mold your life. And each and every day with Jesus, as the song says, is sweeter than the day before. I will walk with him because he talks with me. I will love him because he's already loved me. I will serve him because he's already helped me. I will be the instrument of his peace where every day I wake up, I say, Lord, thank you for a brand new day. I encourage you, I challenge you to start your day with Jesus so that the life that he is fashioning in you will be one that will be reflective of his truth because he has given us golden promises, one that he will never leave us nor forsake us, one that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness to help you in the time of need, to struggle with you. And, and this I really love, asking it shall be given, knocking the door be open. Wow, seek and you will find him. These are the things that's part of what God is doing for the church in you. Eternal God, our Father, for this time together, we're so grateful. Lord, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. He who lived a perfect life, he who knew no sin, became sin for us. Father, we're reminded by your holy word that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us. 
Lord, there might be someone here right now needing that forgiveness. Make it happen for them right now. Lord, there, there might be someone in here who needs to practice. Practice with a loving family. Practice walking for you and talking for you. And they need the warmth and support of a great church home. Lord, if Furfins Baptist is to be that, make it real for them right now. All of us need grooming. All of us need <laughs> fixing up. We're broken down and torn and things are just out of place. Lord, make us over. Make us over right now. Right now. Lord, give us the faith and the courage to accept it in a real way. And let somebody of the Hall of Faith know in this precious moment. In Jesus' name, amen.